What's up guys, this is Casey Gonzalez from Slingshots Live and today we are in JMS with Brad. How you doing folks? So we're gonna be showing you a little bit of what Brad offers here and he does this for... It's all types of motorsports, so um, late model domestic and import performance vehicles, uh, marine offshore, uh, pro stock motorcycle, um, pro stock cars, um, road racing, uh, Polaris off-road, Polaris slingshot, uh, V-twin Harley-Davidson tuning and ignition products. We do just about everything and you can see our wall of fame over here. We've got a um, couple of uh, world record setting Cobra Jets. We also have the world's fastest Cobra Jet which ran 208.806 miles per hour in the standing mile at the Space Shuttle landing strip over in Cape Canaveral. Um, you can kind of see various different racers along the wall, mini pro stock uh, NHRA racers, mini NHRA pro stock motorcycle racers. Uh, we also have the world record for the fastest uh, quarter mile, um, basically which is held by Matt Smith. We recently did some uh, video work with him at the Gator Nationals last weekend. Um, set four NHRA speed records with our Cobra Jet as well as the actual uh, certified standing mile world speed record for the four, uh, four Cobra Jet Mustang. So pretty much all your needs and pretty why much. am I here today? Yeah. I'm here because Brad is, has offered to install one of their chips and um, computer yeah, so for the Polaris Slingshot. Yeah, basically what we're going to install is this right here. It's um, our Pedal Max product. You can kind of see it's uh, basically a waterproof um, throttle enhancement device, plugs directly into the accelerator pedal and has a control knob that plugs into this four pin connector. You can see the control knob right here. This basically allows you to infinitely adjust the throttle sensitivity on your Polaris slingshot from stock all the way to as aggressive as the throttle can possibly be without the control system going crazy. So pretty innovative product takes about 20 minutes or less to install on a Polaris slingshot. In fact, we did 26 in two days. Uh, KC was there. And so slingshot only slingorama yep. event down in Sarasota. It's a great event. If you ever uh, get a chance to attend a slingshot uh, or sling, slingorama event, uh, it's well worth your time to do it. Lots of cool stuff and great deals. Right now we're yeah. gonna go and do a quick tour through the actual factory here where they make them. So stay tuned. These motorcycles to go through the existing Daytona Twin Tech product line and we're going to be updating that entire product line. So we're going to be converting their products to plug and play. So they'll plug into the, the factory sensors. Um, we also make aftermarket ECUs that are fully programmable by the owner himself via laptop computer. Um, we've also got twin scan tools that um, new owners will use to um, add key fobs, change key fobs, um, change uh, various different things, convert the motorcycle from two wheel to three wheel for a trike. Um, there's a, a wide range of things we can do including bleeding ABS systems. Wow, um, that's awesome. That can be done uh, without going to the Harley Davidson dealership. It can either be done right in your driveway or you can do it through one of our dealers who buy these tools and use them in their motorcycle shops. Um, and a lot of what we do is performance related, so ignition, spark, timing, fuel. Um, most of these bikes you see here, they're all fuel injected and they basically cover the full gambit of all the fuel injected motorcycles that Harley's made up to date. So we've got ranging from older, which the white bike being the oldest, um, and having the poorest um, ignition system all the way around to what is the, the newest, latest, greatest, uh, well, 2017 model motorcycle anyway. We've got lots of equipment in here. Um, we've actually got a test stand where we run a um, carbureted LS1 engine. Um, we can basically fill up the radiators, fill up the fuel tank, charge up the battery, push this thing outside, fire this engine up, and do a host of diagnostic work um, to it. We're mainly using this engine stand to test our smart And this is something device. that you also manufacture in yeah, house, so, correct? Yeah, so we, we manufacture the, and we have various different manufacturing facilities beyond just um, this one. We have 10 buildings in Mississippi, 
Um, we've got another location where we do some machining work in Missouri. We've got the facility here, which is primarily where all of our, our final assembly work is done. So this particular engine has our Smart Spark LS on it, and um, that's basically a programmable ignition system for um, carbureted LS engines, and it's hands down the most advanced product uh, in the aftermarket today. So, and then we also have some of our other devices. Um, we, we've, we've got the programming portion of the Smart Spark LS here, but also when we're running this engine, we're monitoring wideband air fuel ratios, and this is another product that we manufacture called the WeGo 3. Uh, dual display. So this is monitoring both sides of the engine um, air fuel ratio output and we can um, we're currently have been testing it on using ethanol uh, primarily but you can also change it back. There's just a dip switch um, that lets you go back to regular gasoline type of fuel. So it's amazing. So it's one of the pieces of test equipment that we have. Um, we've got another piece of equipment over here that we use to test our um, distributors. So um, we are a manufacturer of distributors um, for late model General Motors applications. Uh, primarily, we also dabble in um, Ford and Dodge um, the distributors as well. And, and we manufacture this for the marine industry also, which is um, designed to be combined with our offshore marine racing ignition box and ignition coil. So if I want my boat to be faster, I just need to come to you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> we can definitely there you go. So I know I have a lot of followers that are all into slingshots, but all of those other followers I also have that are into sports cars, Corvettes, Camaros, Mustangs. I mean, all of it, you know, you guys just need to search for JMS and most likely the link will be below here so that way you guys can click in and take a look at more of here and learn more about the product First thing for the installation you got to remove the battery cover That's the first step It's kind of a locking kind of deal so you have to pull this out and when you pull that out, it unlocks basically this portion. So see how it works is you push it in, it gets wider. Pull it out, it gets narrower and narrower so you can pull it back through the hole. Same thing when we put it back in. Okay, and then we got these little torques. And basically, cover pops out like that. Very important is to remove the ground strap on the battery. And the reason why you do this primarily is to kill all the power to the ECU. If you don't do this step, when you plug the device in and you start the vehicle, the vehicle won't relearn the pedal position or the new pedal position. So it's very important that you kill power to the battery so that there's no problems after you do the installation when you start the vehicle. So there's a ground strap in here. Remember, you are dealing with live power here, so. Be very careful. And notice when you're taking it loose, as you wiggle the cable, uh, ring terminal back and forth, it'll spark a little bit, so. That's how you know that you're on a true ground. Okay. Pop that out. Put the nut back on there because the, it's just a bolt. So we put the nut back on there just to hold the bolt in place so it doesn't slide back out. End up on the ground. Okay. Next step is basically assemble the product. So when you open up the box, it's got the instructions. In my case, I'm not going to use those because I've done several. 
comes with a hardware kit. Basically, the hardware kit is just some tie wraps so that you can um, tie wrap up the cables. This little red chip right here is basically a resistor. And what this does is if you plug it into the four position connector where the knob would normally plug in, this is like having the knob set at 60% all the time. So a lot of people, when they install these in cars, trucks, SUVs, with the knob turned up to 100%, it's pretty aggressive. It's really hot rod stuff where the average consumer um, likes it and where we found the sweet spot to be is 60% on the control knob. So we give them the option to plug this resistor in, just run it at 60% all the time. Then there's no knob, no additional wires or anything else. So in this case for Casey, he's a real hot rod guy. There's no need for that. He's just gonna turn it up to 100% and do burnouts all day long probably. You know it. Um, one thing that Pedal Max comes with um, is an optional 12 volt input. And so I'm going to show you what this 12 volt input is. Fancy tape. So the 12 volt input basically is a ring terminal. And this ring terminal can be connected directly to the 12 volt input on the fuse box, which in this case there's one right underneath the bonnet of the vehicle or it could be connected to the battery. If you were gonna use this on a slingshot, you would wanna connect it into the fuse box because it's the easiest place to gain access to a hot 12 volt input. What the 12 volt input does is basically enable some LED lights that are hidden behind this black panel right here. And they're really only used for diagnostic purposes and that's internally. So the consumer would would never really know or care for that matter what the LEDs are doing or are saying. Um, this is more for a product that we would build for Roush or Edelbrock or Ford or Dodge or GM where they would want to have some built-in diagnostics so if the vehicle came into the dealership for warranty um, if this product was suspected of being an issue then they could interpret the LED lights with the unit powered on to see if it's actually working correctly or not. So we're not going to use this on Casey's swing shot because we don't need it and he's not going to drive with his head underneath the dash looking for LED. <laughs> and if there's any problems I'm gonna come to JMS directly and you they will it. take care of you no doubt you they will. It. Yep you got it. So customer service is, is our big thing. Um, another thing that's important too is if your vehicle is modified. If you put an aftermarket turbo kit or you put an aftermarket supercharger kit on there, this product is going to be very aggressive. So you typically wouldn't run it with the knob at 100% with any type of aftermarket tuning because there is some minor manipulation of the throttle tables that are done when they insert a new calibration file for a turbocharger or a supercharger. So 60%, between 15 and 60% are actually the sweet spot where you get the best performance. In this case, this is a naturally aspirated um, vehicle that's mostly stock, so we don't have to worry about that. You'll be able to run the knob in any position that you want and basically dial in your preferred level of performance. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the controller onto the accelerator pedal. This is the fun part, so you have to have small fingers. Um, or your son or your daughter could do it for you. <laughs> um, but it's, it's so simple, it literally plugs directly into the accelerator pedal position sensor. Um, we use gold pins primarily on everything that we manufacture to make sure that we have good connectivity and obviously for environmental reasons as well. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna physically install the pedal max unit onto the accelerator pedal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unplug this connector right here. So it's fairly easy to get to. I'll um, have to climb in here, grab a screwdriver, and um, pry the tab, the locking tab, open to pull it off. So it's gonna be fairly hard to see that from the camera view. Um, basically the locking tab is right here. On this particular one, looks like I can just pull it, pop the connector right out. So I'm not sure if you can see that, Casey. Yes. But that's the actual connector. So what we're going to do is plug Paddle Max into that next. So we're going to take the, the male connector for the Paddle Max kit itself. We're going to plug it straight into the factory harness. So you kind of have to be pretty precise when you do this. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, I'm gonna fumble my way through it. Okay, bam, so that's snap. It's connected firmly into place, and you actually hear the locking tab lock back onto the um, wiring harness itself. So you kind of want to push until you hear a little click or feel a little click. Same thing when we plug it into back into the accelerator pedal. So you got to push really hard because this is a weather tight connector. And there you go. click and play. Click, click. So, and then the next thing that you need to do is figure out where you're gonna mount the control box All right. itself. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. Some people mount it right like that, or they'll run it upside down, mount it like that. Um, can also mount it like this so you can see the LEDs. The big thing is just to make sure that the harness is kind of away from any other moving. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply some double-sided tape to the back of this control knob. Um, this will allow us to stick the, the control knob in the interior virtually anywhere Casey wants it, but it's much easier to prep the knob in advance. So, in this case, I'm just going to attach the knob to the double sided tape. Do that on a flat surface. This is special tape, this is actually Gorilla brand. And then the only hard part about this when it's left over is physically pulling the back side of this double-sided tape because like I said it's Gorilla tape and it takes you quite a while to fumble with this and get it off. Um, a lot of people use industrial type Velcro. Just be sure that whatever you're using to mount the control knob to the interior of the vehicle uses like a, a triple adhesive 3M high quality um, type of adhesive. That way you don't ever have to worry about it coming loose, flopping around, getting underneath your foot. So Casey, point out in the interior here i know that you you want it kind of up in here yeah somewhere. we can put a rye right in this area right here okay so that way the knob it's nice and hidden so, down so he, he's picked the spot where the, the this is where is. i'm choosing to put it you guys again can put it anywhere you guys want i know that our sponsor slingshot only they put them um around this area here and i do want a little i'm right-handed so i want a little better um access to it Especially when you have the other slingshot next to you and you need to catch up. Uh, I want to be able to control it easily. And in this case, Casey's not going to have to worry about catching up to anybody else's slingshot because once we fire this vehicle up, it's going to have... Such... They're going to have to catch up with me. <laughs> it's going to have pretty impressive, uh, impressive throttle response. It's going to accelerate much, much quicker. Um, it's going to be much easier to spin the rear tire. Um, there's a lot of uh, positive side effects it picks up what feels like a little bit of low end to mid-range power and torque it's really hard to measure that on a dyno we've kind of tried it a few times and um, it's it's very difficult to do um, on these vehicles but um, nonetheless it's going to feel more powerful it's going to it's going to accelerate much quicker and um, and you're going to love it so basically what we're going to do now to kind of finish this up is there's there's a nice little cavity up in here where this wire can be tucked away um, just basically pinching it in between the factory bodywork and in this case we're going to run it up toward the front of the vehicle because we still need to connect it to the pedal max unit itself so i'm going to go ahead and connect it now and then i'll um, coil the wire up and um, we'll tuck it up away underneath the bodywork here so that uh, nobody can see that anything's even installed unless they look at the knob so Okay, so we got it connected. What I'm gonna do, easy access right there. Yeah. So this is why your installation, if you do it just like me, just like me, it will look like something like this. You got your pedal mats down there, screwed in for proper, Installation you want to make sure you use that and use double tip on that box down there because it can fall out with the vibrations on the slingshots And then we have our knob right there for controlling it. Yeah, that's pretty simple. This That's a hundred percent. That's doing burnouts all day long. Have fun 
and that's where most people like it is about 50 to 60 percent we can go all the way back to stock right. just in case your friend's driving it so, we're reconnecting the ground strap on the battery right here we got sparks coming out so that's good that means it's got power at least it's grounding power so right here basically I'm just gonna tighten that back up you don't have to torque these down very much at all you don't want to break the bolt or the nut just give it a good snug and you're ready to roll so next thing we'll do is we'll put the back panel back onto the vehicle it's pretty easy just takes us a couple of minutes So, so pretty much reversing yeah. the way you took it out this is the way you put it back in so there's a little tab right here it goes into this receiver right here but first you want to be sure you stick that in and then it kind of pulls up a little bit to lock it into place and then basically plug this back in here so just for ease to make sure it, it's held into place pretty well stick that back in there this will particularly hold the panel in place while we get the Torx bits, the Torx bolts back in it. So then you pop the pin back in. You can hear it locks into place, nice and sturdy. So next thing we'll do, pop our Torx bolts back in here. Go ahead and get this one over here started. Okay. Back in place. As you can see, it goes to boop, right there. How awesome is that? This is starting to be as simple as that. So, Casey's kind enough to give me the keys. Oh, yeah. It's hot rod. Okay. Good look, everything looks good. Check engine, everything's normal. And so one, one way you can test to see if the product's actually without even driving the vehicle is to just press on the accelerator pedal just a bit, okay, with the knob turned to zero. Rev it up to say, oh, we're at just a little over 1500 RPM. And just reach over and twist the knob. And it should, should automatically build RPM on its own. Now we'll go back, we're at 1250. Twist the knob. I'm not doing that with my foot. That's just totally the knob functioning right there. So he breaks up. So we're gonna get out. We're gonna let Casey hop in his new slingshot and go for a ride. All right. All right. So this is the first test with the pedal mats. We're gonna go for a little drive to see how it feels. Right now I have it on zero, so it's acting as factory, completely stuck. And I am not planning on putting it anywhere near up in this parking lot yet, but once we get to the street, we're gonna see. All right, what do we have over there, Brad? Do you uh, know? You can go down that way. All right. So one, one thing you can do is when you're kind of just driving at a steady speed, um, you can actually turn the knob just like I did when it was at idle. And uh, you'll feel the vehicle increase and ex so right accelerate on its own. I'm leaving it, pretty much tapping on the gas. I'm accelerating it on the knob, I'm bringing it up. And I am not moving my feet. This is completely by itself. I'm gonna put it back to zero, and I felt the lag in here. Like, yeah, how was big difference. So, I don't know what we got over here. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the knob up a little bit. I'm gonna put it on right there. Is Let's on put about, it on hundred. On a hundred, right there. Let's put it on hundred. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> this is not a slingshot i brought to you earlier 
earlier, my friend. <laughs> no. Not at all. Whoa, this thing feels awesome. So pretty impressive, huh? It is amazing. The reaction of the slingshot, I mean, I'm pretty sure Tiffany feels good right now. family we just finished the installation of the JMS pedal mats from my friend here Brad this product it's amazing it's a must-have in your slingshot quick reaction I mean it feels great and as you can see Tiffany she's happy right now very happy thank you Brad so much for your time the installation and we actually did a video which is gonna be up in my website also, you're gonna be able to find it in JMS website how to install the pedal mats. Literally takes 50 minutes or less. And if you prep before, even less time. Just make sure you know the location you want your knob at, the location of the actual um, computer, exactly where you want it, and it will make things maybe 10 to 15 minutes total. It was great, fast. Thank you, Brad, again for everything, for your help. And anything you wanna tell, my family here, a Slingshot family. I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you to KC for coming by. You rock, brother. Thank you, man. See you guys in the next one.